Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are talking about the one, the only, the Steph Curry. We are talking about Steph Curry because he's an all-time great. That's his current status. However, we all have a beginning. And today, we're going to rewind the clock and see if we can deduce what led Steph to being the great player that he is today and has been for the last 10 plus years. To do this, we're not going to look at the NBA games. We're not even going to look at his college games at Davidson. Instead, we're going to go way back and look at what Stephen Curry, the man, the myth, the legend, was like in high school. So let's go. The best game film that I was able to find was Norcross versus Charlotte Christian, taking place circa 2005. We currently see Steph Curry on Charlotte Christian. As we're watching this film, this is the man we are watching. All right, we're going to take this step by step and talk about essentially the things he struggled with all the way leading up to the things he had success with, even at the high school level, and how those essentially led him to be into the NBA. So the first thing is it's been fairly well documented that Steph was small growing up. One of the big areas is that he's going to be less athletic than the majority of people he plays against. And we saw this even at a high school level. He brought up the ball quite a bit, but even in that, he still made several mistakes handling the ball that you wouldn't see in Steph today. But even in more concrete terms, when Steph would go to drive the ball, so he was number 20 in high school, when Steph would go to drive the ball, we saw that he was met with a lot of length at the rim that he simply didn't have. Okay, we see rim protectors getting a piece of this ball as he's going up because Steph is shorter and less athletic. If there was a lot of congestion at all, Steph had difficulty finishing around the rim because of how much length and athleticism other teams provided. And the same thing in college and the same thing in the NBA is he goes to drive with his left hand. He is going to be met with this essentially rim protector right here who gets elevated and gets a piece of that ball on the way up. And so while a lot of people would think, oh, this shows that Steph is going to be bad in the future, bad at the next level, bad at the level after that, I think what it actually shows is that Steph had to rely on other tools to create open shots. So he couldn't drive into packed lanes and the same thing in the NBA. So this taught him at an early age, he can't rely on explosive athletic ability. He has to generate offense when there's much more open space and use that to create good looks instead of using his physical gifts, which I think is super crucial for moving to the next level. And so even from his high school days, Steph was never under the illusion that he was going to be dunking over people. And so what he had to do is he had to develop his shooting essentially to be as elite as it could be. And we can see even from high school, they ran specific sets on a regular basis to try and get Steph shot. I've seen every just about every single high school team ever run some version of this. We just kick the ball up to the top and then back for a screen with Steph in the corner. And Steph was elite shooting in this game and the defense knew it and the offense knew it. And not only was Steph elite in shooting, you see, we see him right here, he was also elite in making decisions and having the green light. So because he was such an elite shooter, the coach trusted him to shoot this kind of shot in transition. You do not see that at a high school level. You just don't see it. And again, we see another baseline out of bounds play where they're specifically targeting Steph. And I don't really know what the defense is doing here, but he gets another open jumper. And because high school statistics aren't quite on the same page, I'd be really curious to know what he actually shot in high school. I doubt anyone has super accurate information except for maybe him and his family. But his ability to stop and essentially rise up immediately has obviously stayed with him all the way through to the NBA. We can see that the defense is picking him up all the way up here as well, which I think also bodes well because it teaches him about I think the biggest concept here, which is going to be gravity, which I'm going to talk on more in a second. But again, we can see defense slightly gets picked on the screen. Steph immediately reacts to where the defense left, doesn't keep going forward because that'd be an easier closeout for the defense, stops and hits a three. If he gets his feet set, he is going to be elite from any level. Then the big thing for me is there's a big difference in between being an elite shooter and knowing you're an elite shooter and what that creates. So one thing that his high school team liked to do is they like to push and transition. And Steph is great at this because he understands the game so well. Okay, so his ability to push and transition leads him to essentially get those open shots. And even though he breaks this, he's still knowing what the good shots are for him. And he's learning that on the fly as opposed to not having that practice beforehand. And him pushing in transition here, 
essentially just gives him a future building block because the NBA is going to be all in transition. And that's essentially where he thrives is in the miscommunication on transition. So his ability to see the floor and pass it up ahead immediately to this player who has a slight step. That's a great pass, you know, at a high school level, that's a very, very good pass. And then this blends itself so well into the half court as well. So much of the Warriors offense, so much of Steph's offense, period, is recognizing where the help is and where the gravity is and being able to counteract it one way or the other. Okay, so he's moving this way. As the defense shades over, this player is the one that is open. Steph is patient. Okay, eventually sees him. Probably takes him a little bit longer than it would have in the NBA, but eventually does put a pass right on the dot to him. And this kind of pass is what creates open looks for Warriors today. And then finally, if there were two clips that I think show most concretely why Steph is an MVP in today's day and age, it's these two. Okay? We want to see essentially the pairing of his elite shooting with his elite IQ, along with him pushing the ball in transition. So these are quick decisions happening. We're going to see Steph pushing the ball in transition. Okay? As he goes right here, what's he doing? Okay? He's engaging this defender. He's saying, look at me, I have the ball, I'm a threat. He fakes the shot right here. The whole time he's not looking, but he knows that this player is the one that is open. Steph, from way back there, has five players essentially engaged on him and leads to an open look for his teammate. And this shows that he understands the gravity that his shooting provides and how that leads to open shots for teammates. And then one of the huge things that I fundamentally believe is it's not the three-point shot that actually is so lethal. It's the threat of the three-point shot. And Steph understands this absolutely better than anyone else. And so in this ball screen, what is Steph going to threaten? He says, I've hit these threes. Get up here because I'm going to shoot this ball. And simply, the roller rolls, gets both defenders to go with Steph, and we see a wide open layup at the rim. Steph did this in high school, he did this in college, and he does it today. Steph's team does end up getting the dub, as I'm sure you all are very curious. There's the man right there. If you enjoyed this and would like more of it, feel free to like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a blessed rest of your day.